after making a video about this HP laptop, here's another one. Don't worry, I've run out of HP laptops. This is an HP Stream 13, more specifically known as HP Stream 13 C100NL. This is actually my brother's computer, but I was able to borrow it for this video. On the left side, it has a Kensington lock, HDMI port, USB 3.0 port, headphone jack, which also supports microphones built into headphones like my HP 15 does, a micro SD card slot, and a power LED. On the front there are just the two stereo speakers. On the right side there are two USB 2.0 ports and the power jack with an indicator LED. There's nothing on the back. I've seen other HP Stream 13 models which say Hewlett Packard across the back but this one doesn't say that. On the bottom there's nothing interesting but you can see the two speakers. This laptop is much thinner and less powerful than my HP 15. Of course it was also much cheaper. Costs around 250 euros. I really like this blue design. It's a bit too tacky but it's really nice to look at. And it's not glossy so it attracts less fingerprints. The only glossy part on the outside is the HP logo which looks black but it's actually dark blue. As the name HP Stream 13 suggests, it has a 13 inch screen. It has the same resolution as my HP 15 laptop 1366 by 768 but it's matte which is a great improvement over my glossy LCD. The keyboard is about the same, of course it's missing the numeric keypad. The touchpad uh, looks good at first because it has one single button like the MacBook does. But actually, in my opinion, it's it's kind of crap. It often misses when you click on it and uh, misinterprets uh, left clicks with right clicks and stuff like that. You'd be better off using this computer with an external mouse. At the top, it has a webcam that claims to be 720p. It's an HP True Vision HD, just like my HP 15, but the quality is actually worse than the webcam in my HP 15. It has a sticker which says Intel inside, but doesn't specify what processor it has. The processor in this computer is an Intel Celeron N3050, and it's a dual core without hyper threading. It has 2GB of RAM and a 32GB embedded multimedia card storage, which like an SSD it's not fragile but it's not as fast as an SSD. So the micro SD card uh, slot comes in handy if you are planning to use this computer for more than just streaming stuff over the internet. Of course it has Wi-Fi but it also has Bluetooth unlike my HP 15 which was three times the price of this. Earlier models of this came with Windows 8.1, but this one came with Windows 10. And now we're gonna boot it up. Here's the power button, which lights up unlike my HP 15. And we'll see how long Windows 10 takes to start up on this uh, eMMC drive. Keep in mind that it doesn't have a lot of programs installed. It has Google Chrome, Microsoft Office 2016, um, unchecky and I think that's pretty much it actually. Okay so the startup was nothing impressive but wasn't that slow either. It's flickering because the display brightness is low so I'll turn it up a little bit. Now I'm gonna log in and I've made this secondary username for me which is almost empty. But even my brother's user account uh, doesn't have much stuff on it. Here it is logged in. The built-in trackpad in this thing is not very good. I mean, you can point just fine. Let's try to open the start menu. It worked. Let's try right-clicking, which is by clicking the lower right corner, and it worked. Of course, on camera it's gonna work just fine, but I don't like it very much. The touchpad in my HP 15 was better, and the one on the MacBook is even better. There's not much to say, it's just a basic Windows 10 computer, runs just fine for basic tasks. It has about 
about 6.6 gigabytes available but um, uh, Microsoft Office takes up quite some space and we installed a 32 gigabyte SD card which is almost empty right now but it's there just in case see there's Microsoft Office 365 Pro Plus which I got uh, for free with my university's Office 365 account there's Skype and various drivers, Java, because my brother uses this computer to play Minecraft, which runs quite well at uh, medium to low settings on full screen. I don't know if it's installed on my user account, I don't think so, so I cannot demonstrate it, but it runs okay. I've installed the Passmark performance test, which we'll see in a moment, Malwarebytes, Google Chrome, various drivers, various stuff that the computer came with, Malwarebytes anti-exploit, but that's just 6 megabytes. Unchecky, which every computer should have. So why have I made a, a video about this computer? There's nothing much to say about it, it's just a basic Windows 10 laptop which works great for basic tasks. On my video about the HP 15, which is my new main computer, someone commented saying how weird it was for me to switch from a high-end MacBook Pro to a low-end budget PC running Windows, even though I installed Mac OS X on it. So I got that uh, cheap HP stream and I'm gonna compare how it performs to, to this 2009 MacBook Pro which has been my main computer from when I bought it in February 2010 until the time I bought my HP 15 laptop in May 2015. Of course the MacBook is much more expensive than both this HP stream and my HP 15 so it has to be better, right? But you have to take into account that that's a 2009 model, it's not the most recent, highest end Retina MacBook Pro. This is a model that's getting old, and in fact, it can't officially run Mac OS Sierra, while the 2009 MacBook, not the Pro Edition, the cheaper white plastic MacBook, can run Sierra officially. I can run it unofficially if I use a patch tool, but uh, I have Snow Leopard installed on it because it's my favorite version of Mac OS X and it's not a big deal if it's old because it's not my main computer anymore. But on a secondary partition I also have Windows 10 installed on it which runs okay. I've installed the Insider Preview builds on it to test out the features of the anniversary update before it comes out on August 7th. But even if the MacBook is running an under construction version of Windows, I'm gonna compare it with this much cheaper HP which has the latest stable version of Windows 10, the one with the November update. I've already turned off fast startup on this HP stream to get rid of the hibernation file which was using uh, about 2 gigs. So I'm gonna shut it down, I'm gonna plug in my MacBook and we'll try to see which one starts up faster. Probably the HP stream will because it has less stuff, but we'll see how slow a mechanical hard drive is compared to the eMMC on the HP stream. So here are both computers at their boot menus. I won't count how long it takes, I will just start them up at the same time. Keep in mind the MacBook has a 5400 RPM mechanical hard drive and the HP Stream has an eMMC storage. So of course the HP Stream started up first for two reasons. One, the MMC is a little bit faster than the mechanical hard drive, even if not by that much. And because it has less programs installed, even if this computer is not really empty either. It could also be because uh, the stable build is faster than the Insider Preview build. The MacBook has a 2.53 GHz Intel Core 2 Duo, also a dual core without hyperthreading, and it has 8 GB of RAM instead of 2. It has logged in, but it's still loading some taskbar icons. Okay, it's done now. On the MacBook, the brightness is stuck at the maximum. I can't turn it down. So I'll turn up the brightness here too, even if this computer is running on battery power. The HP Streams battery cannot be replaced without taking it apart, but it lasts for a very long time, at least right now when it's new. 
probably can even get up to 10 hours, but I've gotten a bit less. I haven't actually uh, measured what its battery life is, but it lasts a lot longer than my HP 15. And of course, it lasts longer than my MacBook 2, which is almost six and a half years old, and the battery lasts for like 10 minutes. So first test, we're gonna try opening Microsoft Edge on both browsers. I'm not gonna count with a stopwatch, it's just a... It's not a highly scientific test. It's just to see how usable these computers are. And... Microsoft Edge on the HP Stream Remember the page I was I had open before and Microsoft Edge on the MacBook is still loading stuff. The page took a lot longer to load on the MacBook but they were different pages so and I will try a more objective test which is called a benchmark. I'll use Passmark Performance Test 8. Warning, the system appears to be running on battery power. This may negatively impact test scores. Well, we'll try it anyway. And there you go. This is not rigged. A 1500 euro MacBook from 2009 got this score, while a 250 euro laptop from a few months ago got a score of over 600. Actually, there's something wrong with this. With that MacBook, I've gotten scores pretty much equal to the HP Stream. I have no idea why the score is so low this time. I'm just gonna run another test if I can. Yep, run benchmark run another benchmark. So just because the MacBook is a MacBook doesn't mean a computer that's newer is uh, useless just because it's not by Apple. I'm too lazy to run the benchmark on my HP 15 again but that gets a score of around 2200 which isn't as good as a gaming PC but it's better than both of these computers. So again, just because uh, that's a MacBook doesn't mean it's the best computer in the world. And I have no idea what that guy was telling me because uh, he found it so weird that I switched from a MacBook to, an, to a cheaper HP. But the HP is newer and has newer hardware so it performs better than my old MacBook does. Don't get me wrong, I still like this MacBook. I still use it often. It has uh, my entire iTunes library on it, which I don't have on my newer computer. I still use it to run some Mac programs, even if I have El Capitan installed on my HP 15. And it's still a really pretty computer. It has a backlit keyboard, a high quality screen, a great trackpad. But yeah, I still use it often. And in fact, just yesterday, the power adapter is about to die. Somehow the cable just dripped, and now it only works at, at a very specific angle. I added some tape to it, but if you touch the cable, it will unplug. So I ordered a new power adapter on Amazon. The battery is merely as useful as a UPS these days. But yeah, now we're just waiting for the second benchmark to finish to see if it's better or worse. But trust me, this that MacBook gets around 650 score when when there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, see, there you go. That's a more normal score for this computer, 631 almost. And yeah, it's pretty much on par with this computer, which is much cheaper, but of course much newer. If both of these computers, as well as my HP 15, had been the same age, then obviously the MacBook would have been better. But the MacBook is older. Other computers with lower prices have beaten it by now. And even though I said my MacBook has a really nice design and construction and stuff, this HP 15 is actually pretty well built as well. It's pretty heavy. You wouldn't expect it for such a low spec computer. It's made out of plastic, but um, it's higher quality plastic than my HP 15. The display is matte. I wish my HP 15 was like that. The MacBook is also glossy. I know you can buy a version with a matte display, but this one doesn't have it. So last test I'm gonna do is the shutdown time. I really don't like the start menu of the new Windows 10 uh, anniversary update. I prefer the old one, but oh well, 
I'll update to it on all my computers running Windows 10. If I don't like it, I'll install Classic Shell. Both computers have fast startup turned off. And maybe I was wrong, the MacBook did have fast startup enabled, but the HP is fully shut down and so is the MacBook because the sleep light over here has turned off. If you thought my tests were a bit too unfair, I have another idea. In my video about the HP 15, I mentioned that I used a bootable Linux USB drive to fix my Wi-Fi issues. And here's the drive right there. It's a Kingston Data Traveler 101G2, 16GB. It's only USB 2.0, so it will be the same speed on both computers. It has Bunsen Labs Linux installed, which is a newer version of CrunchBang Linux, which is based on Debian and is a lightweight Linux distribution without a desktop environment and with the OpenBox window manager. So we'll plug it in and turn it on and try to boot from it. And here's the problem. The USB drive isn't showing up on the boot menu because that USB flash drive has a master boot record and Macs only like to boot uh, uh, master boot record devices if they are on CD or DVD. Doesn't like it if it's a USB drive. To boot from a USB drive it has to have uh, EFI. The way I, I can get that drive to boot on a Mac is by using um, a boot manager on a CD. The PLOP or PLOP boot manager burned to a CD. I have it burned to a DVD RW, but I think it can even fit on a floppy because it's it's very small. This boot manager is usually used on old computers which cannot boot from USB. If it doesn't work on this part, it means you have to plug the flash drive to a different USB port. But now it's booting up. I said CrunchBang as the host name, but this is a newer version called Bunsen Labs. Here it is booted up. It says CrunchBang on the top right corner, but that's just because I, I prefer the old name. The benchmark tool we're gonna be using is System Profiler and Benchmark. The package is called Hard Info. So I have a shortcut to Hard Info here. Here's the summary if you want to see what processor and RAM it has. There's Bunsen Labs GNU slash Linux 8.5. It has a benchmark feature here. So we'll try the first one. Oh, and by the way, of course, it, this operating system is 64-bit, just like Windows 10 on both computers. This machine got a score of 6.92 on the CPU Blowfish. Let me write that down. So those are the benchmark scores on the MacBook. Now let's try it on the HP Stream. Of course, I had to enable legacy support in the BIOS setup before being able to boot to this USB drive. Whoops, I accidentally selected notebook hard drive, but it will detect that um, that the internal hard drive is not bootable with uh, legacy BIOS. So it will try the next uh, legacy device, which is the USB drive. I've just run out of space on my phone, despite having over 30 gigabytes available before I started recording. So I'm recording this part with my iPhone 4S. We'll just run these benchmarks real quick and then we'll end the video. Somehow Linux detects that it's a smaller display and, and increases the DPI a little bit. There's the summary. Now let's run the benchmarks. So the CPU Blowfish got 10.06. So the results are in. On every test except for the CPU crypto hash, a lower score is better. So even though on my previous tests with Windows, 
they seem to perform about equally. With these benchmarks, it looks like the central processing unit and flowing point unit aren't exactly the same. The old Intel Core 2 Duo is a little bit better than the Intel Celeron in this newer computer, but the Intel Celeron isn't doing a horrible job. Keep in mind that the HP Stream is fanless, it doesn't have any moving parts whatsoever, which is perfect for my brother who constantly moves his computer around like this. If we had bought him another computer with a mechanical hard drive, he would have broken it in a short time. Well, this computer is more durable. So that's it about the comparison between a 1500 euro computer from 2009 and a 250 euro one from 2016. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in another video.